Hello, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Philip Duncan with our Climate Watch update for the month of April, brought to you by IBM and also ruralweather.co.nz. And uh, to be honest with you, the setup as we go into April is looking pretty classic for this time of the year. This is basically the uh, animated wind map with air pressure thrown into it. And what this is showing you for the start of April is what I like to call the air pressure sandwich. Low pressure up here in the purple, high pressure here in the white and yellow, low pressure again down here. And so this belt of high pressure coming out of the Indian Ocean, across Australia and into the New Zealand area and beyond is likely to be with us for a little while yet. And so that means two things. One, the weather's a little bit calmer, I guess overall. There's no big storms bubbling up in the tropics like we were seeing a month or so ago. And the other feature is the windy westerlies that we get in autumn. They're coming in now. So let's take a look and see what's going on at the moment. Soil moisture levels in the North Island, uh, 30 centimetres deep. And what we're seeing is a lot of the uh, map here, orange and yellow. So you're around about 50% to 0% of your normal moisture levels. So it is pretty dry. Uh, I think many places here in the eastern uh, North Island are probably driest um, compared to other parts of the North Island. While it looks a little similar everywhere, we are noticing certainly in central and southern parts of uh, Hawke's Bay that that is particularly dry in that region. Soil moisture levels in the South Island are quite similar to the North Island. Western areas aren't as dry as the eastern areas, but southern areas like Southland, bit of both. Some parts of Southland, not too bad. Other areas are still very much drier than average. So as you can see, the eastern half of the South Island is definitely leaning in that much drier than usual category for the soil moisture levels, except over here on the western side where it is actually uh, a little bit more normal. Let's have a look now at the uh, temperatures, soil temperatures now. And what we're seeing is around the North Island, oranges and a little bit of green. Uh, the scale's a little bit hard to read, but really we're in the middle to upper teens soil moisture, uh, sorry, soil temperatures. Now that's quite mild. So that's a positive, even though the ground's a little dry, it's quite warm at the moment. So that should give you a little bit of confidence. This is at 10 centimeters uh, deep. And then we go into the South Island, again, pretty mild around the uh, eastern and northern areas. You're still up into the um, low to mid teens, but the West Coast, getting down closer to the single digits once you get into the greens and even slightly blue showing up there. And so that's quite normal. So I think what we're seeing is slightly warmer than average though at the moment. So here's the big thing. Where's La Nina gone? It's faded out. This is from the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia. We thank them. Uh, inactive now. So we were clearly over into the La Nina area before. Now we're bang on neutral. That means pretty much neutral weather patterns. In other words, a bit of everything gets thrown at us. This is what BOM is predicting across April, June and uh, August. And you can see it's leaning. I mean, it's only just come out of La Nina. So when we look at neutral and you look at it for the months ahead, it's still leaning a little bit more to that uh, La Nina side, which means the sea surface temperatures just north of New Zealand should still be a little bit warmer than average. And that does bode well for low pressure. So now let's get into the next few weeks as we do here in our unique way of putting it into square boxes to make it a little clearer exactly where the belts of high pressure and low pressure are. And as we said before, as I said, uh, the uh, air pressure sandwich. Here we go, low pressure to the north, high pressure in the middle, low pressure to the south. So this map is basically the same as the wind map that we opened this video with. And you can see this big area of low pressure to the north of New Zealand. At the moment, we've got that low pressure around parts of the country, uh, those downpours and thunderstorms and isolated ones, not everyone's had them, but that system moving through. So you've got a box of low pressure there. But this is a big area of high pressure, and this is moving New Zealand's way. So we're not expecting a great deal of change as we go into the month of April. Here is week two, not a great deal of change. That air pressure sandwich is still with us. Low pressure dominates the top of the map. High pressure dominates the middle portion of it and into New Zealand and the Southern Ocean, fairly normal. Not overly stormy in fact, uh, but a lot of low pressure down there as you would expect. Could be a tropical cyclone to the Northwest. Also a possible storm here coming out of the Coral Sea. This one's not 100% locked in, but the modeling is suggesting there's definitely still enough energy up here. And with La Nina gone, but the sea surface temperatures still, you know, close to La Nina type levels, uh, I think we're still going to see a bit of life up in this area. But clearly, a lot of dry weather coming along from west to east. We get to week three of April, and again, not a great deal of change. We've still got lows all up here, potential cyclone, 
We've still got a big block of high pressure moving into the southern side of Australia from the Indian Ocean. Then that drifts over into the Tasman Sea and towards New Zealand. But there's the leftovers of that low from week two. This is the current modelling, it might move around a wee bit, but you get the idea that there's still some kind of path out of the tropics into the New Zealand area. It's very weak, as we've seen with the low this week, the last days of March, um, hit and miss downpours. Not everyone got the relief they were hoping they would get, and this will probably be a similar setup. Why is it so hard at the moment to get rainmakers in? It's this big block of high pressure on both sides of New Zealand. It's really making it hard to get these rainmakers to come in and deliver proper rain. Even with that low, 1030 hectopascals on one side, 1035 on the other. That's really high air pressure. Very hard to get a rainmaker in there. So even though, yes, there's a bit of low pressure, the chance of it being really significant, unless it turns into a storm, uh, the high pressure systems are just dominating at the moment. Rainfall for the next seven days. So the first, we'll go into rainfall now. Uh, this is the next seven days, the departure from normal, and this map is thanks to the US government. And what it's showing in blue is wetter than average, red drier than average, and white, bang on normal rainfall. So around the New Zealand area, it's leaning drier than average for the most part. This map uh, capturing perhaps a little bit of that rainmaker we were seeing at the very, very end of March and the 1st of April. But after that, a lot of that dry weather coming out of Australia will be moving our way. And as you can see in Australia, very different to a week ago where it was all blue through this area. Now that blue is out at sea. That's that potential storm moving towards the New Zealand area but, uh, you know, we've got to wait and see. So let's get to the next map. This is showing rainfall right through till April 16. So this is the next couple of weeks. Now these maps can be a little hard to get your head around. So what I've tried to do this time around is put into the boxes the areas that have got almost no rain coming. Because I think that's probably more important to see where that, those areas are. Um, because then you can work out whether or not you've got a chance of rain. And so what we're seeing is a lot of dry area, these white boxes showing rainfall numbers down here, just 0.2 millimetres up to about 30 millimetres. That's over over two weeks worth of rain, and many of these areas in the boxes are getting you know just a few millimetres of rain. So you can really see that big high pressure belt, or belts, moving through and keeping things very dry. No rainfall at all through that part of Australia, very different to a week ago. So what does it mean in New Zealand? Well, it means those high pressure systems are coming in and they're kind of fading out. They're not quite as strong over the New Zealand area and that's allowing this tropical rain up here, and I hope you can see the key, we cut it off last time, um, two 300 millimetres of rain in the dark blue, purpley colours at the top here. So this is all that tropical rain drifting down towards the New Zealand area, but because of our high pressure that's weakening, it's also weakening the lows. So we're in a bit of a neutral zone. There are some pockets around New Zealand showing the potential of 100 millimetres, um, the purple areas at the tops of both islands, but everybody else, there's a lot of yellow in there, and that is in that 20 to 30 to 40 millimetre mark. So there's still not a lot of rain coming that we can see unless this rainmaker here really does come on straight on in uh, in the second week of April, make a direct hit. That would actually change things. But for now, the high pressure belts coming through, the very heavy rain is all up here in the tropics and fading out as it comes down towards the New Zealand area. Let's have a look at the uh, IBM outlooks now. This is for the next month ahead, precipitation uh, and departure from normal. So what you're noticing is they are expecting the top half of the North Island to lean just a little bit wetter than average. That's remembering that's for four weeks worth. So I think this model here, the reason why it could be wrong is if that low that we just talked about out of the tropics up here, if that doesn't arrive, then I think this will go yellow. So this green that you see indicating normal rainfall more than likely is based on one low pressure system that may or may not reach us. So that's the honest truth when you're looking at the long range stuff, you've got a, what I call the wiggle factor. You know, it's got to wiggle around a wee bit left or right. And so that low might go just offshore and suddenly the North Island's much drier than average. But we're getting, maybe getting closer to normal again. And we have noticed that actually in the last month or so, while not everyone's had the rain, some areas have. In the South Island, similar kind of story, but still looking drier than normal around Southland, and that doesn't surprise me with those big blocks of high pressure coming through. So you're leaning drier than average, and I would say, based on this map, most of Canterbury 
is leaning drier than average. You see the green coming over the mountains, that's the computers working out over four weeks. Yeah, some might spill over, but I think, you know, we live here and we know that the mountains are big. I don't, just don't know how much will spill over. There might be a few thunderstorms as well that bubble up. But uh, yeah, it's still looking pretty dry around New Zealand. And even these areas in green, it's not extreme. It's only saying it's about average. It's not crazy wet. So I think we are going into maybe a bit of a drier uh, month than, uh, than we would like still. Now this is the temperature coming up for the next month ahead, leaning a little bit warmer than average, no surprise there, it's been like that for about two years. Uh, pretty much every month is leaning about a degree or so warmer than it should be. So there we go, that is the outlook for the month of April. Uh, obviously there could be changes, you know, we're two mountainous islands, basically in the roaring 40s. So long range forecasts are tricky. Um, the IBM data we use is the best in the world, we think. It's about 65% accurate. That's the way it is at this stage. So when you're two mountainous islands and you've got all of this stuff around us, you know, you can see uh, that these are forecasts, these long range forecasts can be a bit tricky, but that's the current thinking. I hope it's helpful. We'll be back again, obviously, as we go into the month of May. Uh, in the meantime, please go to ruralweather.co.nz. It's got the biggest data dump in New Zealand, so that means everything you need for your farm, property, whatever you do for a living or lifestyle. Hopefully all that information is there for you. Have a great weekend, because it's Easter coming up, and if you're watching this later in April, like I say, we'll see you again on May 1st. 